A similar spot that I painted is the market. And at this point, I believe 68 people were killed and about 200 were injured. Again, people had to get food. They had to go to the market. The timing was known and a shell came down and devastated. Um, it's kind of interesting because uh, this was, ironically, the, the terrible thing that led to something good. At this point, NATO said enough is enough and started uh, demanding that the forces release the city and started bombing ammunition dumps and so on. So that the sacrifice for these people, in some ways, uh, paid off. Someone, I, one of my students asked me once, you know, when I get depressed painting pictures like this, that they're all so gloomy and, and terrible. And, but I think the other thing was, it was, I have to point out, it, it was a delicious painting to paint. It's a huge still life. And as a painting, it, it was a delight to paint, despite the, the uh, sadness of the situation. And the, these pink dots are resin, which are filling the, the divot, if you will, from the shell. Um, they're pink, and they're referred to as Sarajevo, Sarajevo roses. And you can see them all over the city. And I'm sure they're still there. I painted some other pictures in the now recovering city. Oops, I'll go back. Um, this is called Two Institutions. The building on your left that's all burned out is the Parliament building. It's completely destroyed. It's just a shell of a building and uh, completely blackened. The yellow building, on the other hand, is the Holiday Inn, uh, which was built for the Olympics. It was also the home of a lot of the journalists covering the, uh, the siege. And the road between the two buildings, which you can't really see, but you can see there is a road there, um, is called Sniper Alley. Consequently, you paid $500 extra to get an inside room. Nobody wanted a room with a window. It was very dangerous to have. On the way from Sarajevo, uh, we went downriver uh, through to a place called Mostar. Ultimately, Mostar was one of the big tourist attractions in the Balkans. It was a, a sort of a 900-year-old church, or part of a bridge that had been built by a Turkish architect. It was an absolutely beautiful place on one of the most beautiful rivers I have ever seen. But uh, during the war, the bridge was hit by Croatian gunners and destroyed. And when I got there, the bridge looked a bit like this. Uh, a temporary uh, platform bridge had been built by some engineers. And at that time, if you can look at that picture, just below, right in about the center of the picture, on that white bit of beach, there's a, what appears to be a large table. It's about 20 feet high, a big platform, and it's covered with rocks with numbers on them. And I just found out um, about a year ago that um, one of the, my friends in the group studio we're in was in fact a military engineer, and she was in fact responsible for the diving team that recovered most of the stones. And that bridge has now been rebuilt and looks like the postcard shot I showed you earlier. The last deployment I had uh, with CFAP was in Afghanistan, where we were there for about three and a half weeks. Um, we, I was fortunate to be teamed up with a historian who knew his way around, who was an old black hat, and knew how to talk to the local general. And we went down the food chain with interviews, and finally a lieutenant who was in charge of, uh, who was the battle adjutant for the headquarters company said, sure, you can ride with us. And we went out for about five days uh, into uh, the desert largely, and visited the forward operating base, bases there. Um, I'll show you some of the pictures. Here um, is the one that's in the show. What I'd call attention to, and if you get a uh, season in, is the, the bald gentleman in the, on the left of the picture is uh, Major Russell King, who's the acting uh, commander of the battle group at that time. This was a scene I came across as I walked out of a tent, and it was really the first serious picture I'd taken, because I didn't know what I was allowed to take pictures of. So I was snapping away, and he turned around with a, the most fierce look I've ever seen, and I thought, oh, I'm in real trouble. They're going to throw me out of this whole thing. And, and instead, in a wonderful Cape Breton accent, he, he said, keep doing that. I really like to see what you're doing. But don't forget those soldiers who, don't, who get ignored, not the fellows riding around in the vehicles, but the guys guarding the front gate that nobody ever notices. And, 
or the guys called swampers, whose job it is is to fill gasoline cans uh, 14 hours a day, six months of the year without a break. Uh, so I'll just flip through to some of those pictures and that'll finish it. So I, some texture in the sky. This is called Waiting in the Maywan Desert, which ironically is where the British probably suffered their worst defeat in Afghanistan around 1870. Uh, slightly underexposed, just, or overexposed, just to show you uh, the detail. This is the vehicle I was riding in, across from him. Maywan Battery. The battle adjutant who brought us along on the ride, jokingly the night we arrived, said, well, you're taking pictures. You should go down to the far end of the camp. The porta potties there and the sunset are just beautiful. And he was just joking and sort of saying, what's an artist doing here? But I played along and said, sure, I'll do that. Um, and since then, when I got home, it was almost one of the first paintings I made and sent to him. He was delighted. That there's another version in my daughter's bathroom right now. Um, he did say to, to deal with swampers, and when I got back to CAF for the second week of uh, the tour, I dealt with this gentleman. Um, he's a swamper, he fills gas cans. He didn't say a word, he, I asked if I could take his picture, he said, gave a little smile and nodded, and I took his picture. I showed this painting, uh, courtesy of uh, National Defense, at the National Defense Headquarters, and two women came up to me at totally different times, unrelated, who said, that's my brother-in-law. <laughs> he had a certain look to him, I guess. So, um, the last pictures are just pictures, I spent a week up in Kabul, and I let people show me around. They showed me some of the graveyard of Russian vehicles. And they went to this particular place, this is the King's Palace in Kabul. And nobody on the, at the detachment, save one, had ever been there. So we actually, <coughs> not only we doubled the size of our convoy because so many people wanted to see it and it was a slack week and so we all went up to look at it. In front of it is the first Canadian camp in Afghanistan, Camp Julian, which is the, all those bunkers in the foreground. And there are probably two or 3,000 soldiers who could probably have their picture taken with this building in the background. So it seemed important to paint. And there it is in my studio and at the show I just had in Kingston. Again, it's about nine feet high. I've also done a couple of small versions of it out of cardboard, which actually seem much more like ruins. And I think this is might something, uh, a direction I might take. One version of the building. It's very thick cardboard, about three quarters of an inch thick. And this is one with a hairy cloud over it. You can see that by cutting away the cardboard, you get that sense of windows, and you get the sense of ruin and the hairy cloud. <laughs>